turn it over to him and we'll get this done. All right. Did you get that? Uh, everybody has a book, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. And pencils? Yes. You know, uh, print time. All right. Um, tips classes, training for inter intervention procedures for servers of alcohol. Uh, a little background on me, I've got 38 years in at Clarence Center, so if you ever wander out there during Labor Day, you know, we have a large beer tent. Uh, beer tent chairman for about 10 years. Um, I also sell insurance, so I have the liability side of this as well. Uh, but anyways, why are you here? Your biggest exposure is your day room or your community room for your private parties. So uh, the biggest thing you're going to have to deal with is just about everybody that's in there when you are hosting a party, you're going to have a knowledge of and know. And those are the hardest people to shut off um, because you're always going to get complaints from them. So you have to be firm. Okay, because 70% of the population consume alcohol in today's legal climate and sue anybody for anything they can. And you, the bartender, along with the establishment, can be held personally liable. So they go after your personal assets. So you have to keep that in the back of the mind when you're serving somebody. Okay? So, um... You're going to learn about the effects of alcohol. How many people have not taken this the last time I talked to class? We got any new people in here? Okay. You're going to learn about the effects of alcohol. We're going to show some vignettes on levels of intoxication, how to recognize them. Part two of the class was really fast. Um, that's just how to deal with somebody after they've had too much to drink or how to shut somebody off. Okay. Uh, there is a quick review and there is uh, 20 question test that you have to pass, so pay attention. I've only had two people fail. One was the president of my fire company, took great pleasure in failing him because he fell asleep during the class. So, but that was it. Uh, you stay awake, you'll learn. So, uh, tips class is designed not to prevent uh, a DWI, but to prevent public intoxication. Okay? Uh, if I sit there and take my keys out of my pocket and say, here, keep my car, uh, give me another drink. If I've had too much to drink, you still cannot legally serve me. Okay? So it's not about um, preventing DWI, it's about preventing public intoxication. So skills, it takes uh, people skills to be a good bartender. How you uh, interact with the general public. You should always have a positive attitude when you go to bartend. If you have a crummy attitude, it's going to reflect and people are going to, you know, treat you totally different. So, um, everybody has some sort of people skills. Uh, the class should help on, uh, improve your skills. Um, maybe teach you a few. The class was designed by a professional bartender, so everything you see on the screen uh, has been time tested and it works. All I ask you to do is that when you're looking at the stuff, uh, the <coughs> examples that they use, put yourself in the bartender's position and think about how you would react in a similar situation. Okay, because it's all about your personality and how you deal with the public. So uh, you may think it's a little hokey how they do it, so try and figure out how you would do it at the same time. So. Uh, the goals of the class are to establish acceptable standards. Uh, how do you do it? It's a joint effort between management, which is the district that sets the rules. I'm sure it's the district that sets the rules and not an individual. Um, and your uh, ability to work with the public, okay? Working hand in hand. You have to follow the rules, they have to follow the rules, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, in the rules, I don't know exactly what rules are there, but you want to make sure in some of the rules that you've got a couple of things posted. Number one, 21 to consume, okay? Uh, number two, and I don't see this a lot, but I'm trying to push it, two forms of ID. Because if somebody is at the function and um, you don't like their ID, uh, if you ask for a second form of ID, 
and they don't have it, it's your first way of saying, I'm sorry, I can't serve you. Okay? So, and it should end any possible argument right then and there. So, those are two rules that I like to see posted. Uh, let's see. Your job is to create a friendly atmosphere, maintain control, which is knowing where your alcohol is going. Um, young kids under 21 are not going to be sitting right up next to the bar. Okay? Uh, by habit, by design, they're going to be as far away from the bartenders as possible. So that they're not under a watchful eye. So you have to pay attention where the uh, alcohol is going. Uh, whether it be an adult coming up for a pitcher uh, and five glasses and taking it back and putting it on a table with young kids. Uh, you know, that's one way of uh, monitoring. And then if that happens, you need to go out and check IDs for those people. Okay? Um, as well as a young kid coming up, grabbing a pitcher and five glasses. With that, you want to re reserve the amount of alcohol you give him, tell him you need to see an ID for everyone that's going to be drinking out of it, or you just give him one glass. Okay? Uh, you want to encourage responsible drinking and avoid problem situations. So it's always better to react than or act than to react. Okay, on page five or five in your book, it's uh, this video is scripted out. So uh, let's start this.
people with impaired judgment may start using inappropriate language or begin throwing things from the stands. And because their judgment is impaired, they tend to overrate themselves. Impaired judgment can also cause intoxicated guests to think that they're okay to drive when they're not. The third cue, slowed reactions, means that the thinking process has been affected. People with slowed reactions may lose their train of thought. They may forget that they have ordered another drink or where they're sitting. This cue also shows up in a guest's glassy, unfocused eyes or in slurred speech. The final behavioral cue, loss of coordination, can be seen when guests stagger or stumble or spill drinks or fumble with their change. Guests may have trouble standing at their seats or begin to bump into people sitting next to them. Drinking alcohol has progressive effects. The more a person drinks, the more cues you are likely to see. Intoxication rate factors affect how quickly a person becomes intoxicated and displays behavioral cues. There are six intoxication rate factors. The first is a person's size. Larger guests may be able to drink more without being as affected as smaller guests. However, if the larger guest size is due mostly to body fat, the reverse can be true since body fat does not absorb alcohol. The second intoxication rate factor is gender. Women are typically smaller, with a higher percentage of body fat, and tend to become intoxicated faster than men. The third factor is the rate of consumption. The faster a guest drinks alcohol, the more quickly the guest will become intoxicated. The fourth intoxication rate factor is strength of the drink. A straight up drink will be absorbed more quickly. A drink diluted with water will be absorbed more slowly. Remember, however, that any carbonated mixer may increase the absorption rate. It is important to understand that each of these drinks has about the same amount of pure alcohol, 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, and one ounce of 100 proof liquor. But remember, we're talking in measured drinks. The figures aren't accurate if the drinks aren't measured. Glass sizes differ, and so does the amount of alcohol in various mixed drinks. Any kind of alcohol beverage can cause intoxication because they contain pure alcohol. The fifth factor is drug use. There is no way to predict how a drug will react with alcohol. The last intoxication rate factor is food intake. Food in the stomach delays the absorption of alcohol into the body. A guest with a full stomach will not become intoxicated as quickly as will a guest drinking on an empty stomach. Alcohol differs from other food and beverages because your body does not have to digest it before absorbing it. It can be absorbed directly into the bloodstream. So, how do we measure the intoxication level for a given person? Behavioral cues are your best way to assess visible intoxication, which can be grounds for arrest regardless of the amount of alcohol actually consumed. Most laws rely on what is called blood alcohol content, or BAC, to determine intoxication. BAC is a measurement of the amount of alcohol in a person's blood. Every jurisdiction has a legal BAC limit, at or above which it is illegal to operate a motor vehicle. BAC levels can be accurately measured only by a blood test or by breathalyzers. As a server or seller of alcohol, you will want to note some key points about blood alcohol <laughs> content. The more alcohol a person consumes, the more behavioral cues you are likely to see and the higher the BAC level will be. A guest's BAC level can be different each time he or she drinks, even when the number of drinks is the same. Intoxication rate factors affect how quickly a person's BAC level rises. Lying <coughs> is the only thing that can lower a person's BAC level. By relying on a guest's behavioral cues and intoxication rate factors and your understanding of BAC, you should be able to assess each guest you serve. Of course, tolerance can make assessing your guests a little harder. Guests who frequently drink alcohol tend to have a high tolerance, allowing them to hide the behavioral cues that might normally indicate that they are intoxicated. Tolerance has no effect on a person's BAC level or the level of intoxication. Just because they don't show the typical cues does not mean they are not impaired. Guests who drink infrequently tend to have a low tolerance and may show signs of intoxication after consuming only a small amount of alcohol. So far, we have talked about the cues that indicate when a person has had too much to drink, and about the intoxication rate factors that affect how quickly a person becomes intoxicated. We've also touched on blood alcohol content, 
and the idea that tolerance can make it harder to accurately assess your guests' levels of intoxication. That knowledge is helpful, of course, but you also need to understand the legal responsibilities that go along with serving alcohol. And you will need guidelines for steps you can take when an incident does occur. When you work at a stadium venue or concession stand, you tend to work faster than if you were serving at a private party. At an event, people want to buy their refreshments and get back quickly to whatever it is they pay to see. Whether you are working in the seats or at a stand, you see each guest for only a few seconds. But that's really all it takes to size someone up. If you're ever tempted to think, the line's a mile long, I'd better just serve this guy a beer and get him out of here, think again. <coughs> Remember that you can be held legally responsible if you serve someone who has already had too much to drink. You already know you could lose your job, but did you know you could cost the management its liquor license, or that you could be sued for any accident the guest may have? It's just not worth it. If you have doubts about selling or serving alcohol to a particular guest, don't make the sale. So if you think a guest is intoxicated, what do you do? And what if the guest gives you a hard time while there's a line of impatient people waiting? The following guidelines can help you make your decision to serve or not to serve, and then feel comfortable carrying it out. Serving alcohol responsibly begins with sizing up your guest and asking yourself, should I serve alcohol to this person? First, you must make sure your guest is old enough to buy alcohol. You cannot serve to underage guests or to those who are trying to buy for underage people. <coughs> to keep alcohol from falling into the wrong hands, be sure to ask for valid identification if there's any question in your mind about the guest's age. In most areas, valid identification requires both a photo and a date of birth. A current driver's license is the most common form of an acceptable ID, but a few other government-issued documents may also be acceptable. Whenever a young person gives you an ID, Check it carefully. Fake IDs can be quite convincing. If you're unsure about one ID, ask for others. Remember that underage guests may possess several false forms of identification. If you still have doubts, call your supervisor or security. You also have to try to prevent <coughs> adults from buying alcohol for underage people. Although these types of transactions are sometimes obvious, they are usually hard to spot. If you have doubts as to where the alcohol is going, ask. Explain that you might lose your job if it goes to an underage person. Guests who have had too much to drink are tougher to deal with. As a server or seller refusing a sale to an intoxicated person, you may feel that you are likely to face an ugly confrontation. But you must never hesitate to say no and move on when necessary. If you pick up on the that a guest is intoxicated, be firm but friendly and refuse the sale. Say, I'm sorry, I can't serve you. Then move on to the next guest. The line will move forward on its own, and the guest you refuse to serve will usually choose to leave rather than create a scene. If the guest asks why you are refusing to sell alcohol, just say, I am not legally allowed to sell you any alcohol, and explain that you would be risking your job if you do. You might even offer the person a soda instead. Above all, avoid provoking the guest. A comment like, because you're drunk, that's why, is sure to make a bad situation worse. If the guest does create a scene, call for your supervisor or security personnel to back you up. Another way you can help your guests enjoy alcohol responsibly is by applying safe selling guidelines. The first guideline, when dealing with an intoxicated guest, try to buy time. The passage of time allows the liver to process at least some of the alcohol out of the bloodstream. For example, if you are in the stands, you may want to avoid a guest you think may be intoxicated. Suggest food to go with alcohol purchases, and offer alternatives when a guest shows signs of intoxication. Soda won't sober anyone up, but it will buy time and keep a guest from drinking more alcohol. Finally, but perhaps most important, use your personal touch. Your people skills. Even guests who have had one too many will usually respond to a polite but friendly request. A little eye contact and a smile. This personal tactic will often diffuse anger or deflect an argument. And it may also keep any people waiting in line from losing their tempers. The law requires that you make a reasonable effort to see that guests don't drink too much. 
using these guidelines can help you fulfill that responsibility. If you combine what you already know about your guests with the tips you are learning in this program, you will be able to sell alcohol safely and responsibly. Okay. Um, just in case anybody's wondering why uh, the class is designed around a stadium, it's because this class is like two hours long and the others are like four, six, eight. So um, we use this. Uh, an intoxicated person is an intoxicated person. It doesn't really matter where he is. Okay. Okay. So let's do a quick review. Start with behavioral cues. They start with inhibitions. Uh, somebody becomes more talkative, a little over friendly, uh, they become more relaxed. From there they move into judgment, it's all progressive. Judgment could be anything uh, where they start using foul language, which is out of their norm. Okay, there are people that just use it all the time, but you know. Um, they may tell off-color off jokes in mixed company as well. Uh, reactions. This is when you need to start to pay attention. Every time you serve somebody, uh, you should be making idle chit-chat with them, okay? Especially the first time, and never assume that the first drink you serve somebody is the first drink they've had that day, okay? But you want to set a baseline the first time you serve somebody. Get an idea of where they're at. Uh, are they already starting to slur? The first thing that goes are the eyes, so you want to make eye contact. Their eyelids start to droop, they become uh, unfocused and red, okay? Very tired looking. So always make eye contact, always have some chit chat with them. If you notice that the reactions, the glassy eyes, or slurred speech, or deliberate speech, um, you know, it's time to slow them down right off the bat, okay? Um, Last coordination. Somebody stumbles up to the bar, you don't really need to serve them, okay? Just, sorry I can't serve you. Offer an alternative right away. Uh, it will help diffuse the thing. If you say, I'm sorry I can't serve you, I can serve you a Pepsi, I can serve you a coffee, whatever. Uh, get them thinking about something besides alcohol. BHC is blood alcohol content. For this class, things to remember, one drink is 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, one ounce of uh, 80 proof, or, or I'm sorry, one ounce of 100 proof, and one and a quarter ounce of 80 proof uh, spirits, okay? Uh, your liver can only process one drink an hour. It doesn't matter how large or small you are, it's not gonna work any faster, okay? If it's damaged, it'll work worse. Uh, some examples to remember, if you had a 150-pound man consuming four drinks in an hour, they would have a BAC of approximately uh, 0 0.10. If you had a 150-pound man and a 150-pound woman drinking the same amount of drinks over the same amount of time, the female will reach a higher BAC faster than the male, primarily because they're smaller, uh, or in this case, she would have a higher percentage of body fat because the weight is the same. Uh, if you had a 150-pound man and a 120-pound man drinking the same amount of drinks over the same amount of time, the 120-pound man would reach a higher BAC faster than the 150-pound <coughs> man due to his size. <coughs> Tolerance. Everybody knows somebody that consume mass quantities and not look like they've had anything. Okay. Uh, it doesn't mean they're not intoxicated, it just means that they're able to hide the signs. So you have to be alert to that. So um, it does not mean they're not intoxicated, just masking the signs. Uh, drugs, whether they're legal or illegal. Medications are going to enhance the effect of the, uh, alcohol. If somebody comes up to the bar and, you know, they're, they're have a, definitely have a cold, they look ill, um, ask them if they've taken any medication. I'm not telling you to refuse to serve them, but get a baseline for what kind of medications they've taken for the day, um, and keep an eye on them. You may want to suggest non-alcoholic drinks, because uh, simple cold medicine, somebody may have a tolerance for it, because uh, they take it all the time, or whatever medication they take all the time, 
but when you mix it with alcohol, it can cause it to have a totally different reaction with it, all right? So um, somebody may pass out right away just from, you know, because they had uh, medication and they're, now they're mixing it with alcohol. ID guidelines. There are four uh, forms, five now, uh, forms of legal ID. Some, when you prove somebody, they must have one of these. It's New York State driver's, or not New York State, a driver's license, it must be valid and current. Um, they could get a non-driver's ID issued by the state, a passport, military ID, or a green card. They must have one of those as their primary ID. Now, in New York, you have at least probably five IDs for New York driver's license because you have uh, the brand new license that's got the dual photos on it, and you have the license prior to that. It could be an enhanced license, which has additional features, um, and you could have the state issued ID. And I don't know if the new driver's license has an enhanced feature or if that's just an enhanced period. Um, so uh, know what they are. Uh, you should, uh, if you don't have one of these books, I encourage you to contact Try It or take a trip out to Try It. I know they carry them. I don't know about any other distributors, but I would almost bet they do because Budweiser puts them out and I think Miller puts them out as well. Um, yeah, this one's put out by Miller. Uh, but the beer distributors have these in hand. And every driver's license in the United States, and if the state has multiple licenses, they're in here as well as a minor ID, and uh, it has the U.S. territories, Canada. Uh, that should take care of everything that's around here. So if somebody comes up, they hand you a Montana driver's license, you don't know if it's a real license or whatever, you could actually go into here, and it will show you all the security features that are built into that license. Uh, UV lights work great in pulling up the feature, special features. But when you're proofing somebody, okay, first thing you have to do is take it out of their wallet. You have to have it in your hand. Because you want to make sure it hasn't been doctored, all right? If it's gone through the washing machine, that's a, that's a sign you need to probably look a little closer. Uh, if you don't like it, as I said before, you want a sign that says two forms of ID required. And uh, if you don't like it, ask for a second ID. If they don't have it, that's your first sign that you can say, I'm sorry, I can't serve you. Okay? Um, but good second IDs, anything with their name and address on it, car registration, um, a credit card or a debit card, because I may give an ID to somebody to go out drinking, I wouldn't, but, you know, as an example, but I'm not going to give them my credit card to help pay for it, okay? I'm not that nice. Um, so, uh, military, or not military, but governments that have photo IDs or any other ID that has a photo, while it can't be the primary, it can be a sufficient backup ID, okay? Uh, and if you don't like any of that, the other thing you should have behind the bar is a log book. This one's not any good because I can tear pages in and out. But if you got a book um, that had actual number pages, okay, it's a bound book with number pages blank. Um, every time there's an in, uh, uh, a party or uh, an event here, whoever's bartending should sign in, okay, time it when they signed in. During the course of the evening, if they have to prove somebody and they don't like their ID, whatever, uh, you can also sit there, put the book out and say, okay, take their ID, set it down on the table, ask them to sign sign in, I verify I'm so-and-so, uh, date of birth, blah, 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 and have them sign it. They may have memorized all the information on it, never practiced the signature, okay? So watch to see if their eyes leave the book where they're writing to check the signature on the driver's license, okay? Ask age-specific questions the whole time um, that you're talking to them. Age-specific questions. You don't have to know what year they graduated from high school, okay? 
but they know, and it should roll off their tongue. Okay. Um, I had a guy who, you know, he worked for uh, the garbage company, and he knew what day garbage pickup was on somebody's street. And he asked them, "What day is your garbage?" You know, just to verify if they actually live there. My kids wouldn't know that answer. They don't take the garbage out. <laughs> so, um, but you know, you just want to you want to read their face. You know, what's your zodiac sign? Most people know what it is, but you know, if they're not who they say they are, you know, they may not know. If they stumble over an answer, that's all you're looking for. Do they answer quickly or do they fumble around for the answer? So. If after you've had them write all that information in, you have a decision to make, <coughs> if you like everything at that point in time, you can write, okay to serve, and serve them. If you still don't like it, refuse to serve, write it down, and send them on their way, okay? If somebody comes in, and from the very beginning, they're already trashed, okay? Refuse to serve them right away, write it down, okay? Because when that person leaves, if they're involved in an accident, trust me, they'll tell everybody, or they'll name off every place they were that evening. Oh yeah, and I was at Eggersville. Well, then you can get dragged into a lawsuit. But if you've got it written down already that you refuse to serve them, or you refuse to serve anybody during the course of the evening because of that, you know, it's your first, this book, first line of defense, okay? Any, any uh, documentation that you can provide is your first line of defense. A lawsuit could come three years down the road. So, and if you don't know who bartended on any given night, you're already two steps in the grave, the other one's on a banana field. So, Okay, so must be current. You must take it out and have it, examine it in your hands. Um, let's see. Ask age specific questions. Absorption rate factors. How fast does the alcohol hit the person? Start to the size of the person based on their weight. Okay? Moves to gender, whether females, females will reach a higher BAC faster than a male of the same size, primarily because they have a higher percentage of body fat. Normally they're smaller than the male, but if you had two of equal size, she has a higher percentage of body fat. Food, it's best to eat prior to out and out drinking. It's going to slow the absorption of alcohol. It doesn't mean just because you ate three course meal, four course meal, or an Irish meal, which is a six pack and a potato. Um, you know, uh, it doesn't matter. It's just going to take a little longer for the alcohol to get there, but you will reach it. So just because you ate doesn't mean you can consume a 12 pack, okay? But it'll slow the absorption of alcohol into your system. Strength of the drink. If you have alcohol behind the bar besides uh, beer. You want to make sure that the uh, regular drinks that you're making are standard, okay? Know what a measured shot looks like. Stick with it. Don't go all over the board because if you're of the mind to count drinks and, okay, first shot, a little heavy, first time he's here, next time, you know, he liked that one, do it again, and then you, now you have no idea how much alcohol you've actually given him. So if you don't have measured pours behind the bar and you're serving regular alcohol, you need to know what a measured shot looks like in the glass that you're serving and be consistent, okay? Do not go all over the board with it. So, rate of consumption. Are they, when, when you see this, and you will see this on the test, I believe it's a question on there. When they talk about gulping, they're talking about chugging one one after another, okay? So, um, is, is the person coming back every 15 minutes, every half hour, you know, 45 minutes, whatever? How fast is that person consuming and coming back to see you, all right? If they're coming back every 15 minutes, you gotta slow them down, all right? Uh, the mood of the person plays a definite role in uh, how alcohol will hit them. Somebody can have the best day of their life and it's just like tolerance. They, you know, 
They don't show any signs of being intoxicated. Contrary, they can have the worst day of their life and, you know, two beers will make them look like they've had ten. If you have to cut somebody off, be pleasant, okay? You always want to be pleasant behind the bar to start, but say no and move on. Or, I'm sorry I can't serve you another beer, but I can serve you a, a Pepsi or I can serve you a coffee, okay? Give them that alternative. Uh, food on the bar, snacks, you know, most snacks are salty, not a good option. Salty food makes them want to drink more. So, uh, but give clear reasons. Your fire department, there's no clearer reason that you don't want to go out and scrape them up off the road 45 minutes after they leave. Okay? Very easy to get that through to them. Um, if they give you a problem, call for backup. Backup could be another bartender, uh, the manager, the host of the party, and last resort police. With the host of the party, I'm sure that the rules are gone over and reviewed prior to using the facility, but one of the things that you should also have in your rules to go over the person who's choosing the facility is that should a problem exist, the bartenders will approach the person that's hosting the party and ask them to get involved to control somebody that's out of control, okay? So, um, also, um, Host of the party, just for you now, just because Junior's 20 and turns 21 in two months, Junior cannot consume, okay? And if you're a bartender and Dad comes up and says, don't worry about it, it's okay, he drinks at home, it's not okay, he's not 21. At the end of the evening, when Dad's had too much to consume, and Junior's his ride home, and Junior's uh, in the same condition, you know, they have an accident, yeah, you're liable, point blank, okay? So, the law says you have to make a reasonable effort. You do so by checking IDs, offering alternatives, non-alcoholic drinks. Documentation is your best proof. And if you have to cut customers off, um, do so. Providing alternate transportation does not mean that you drive them home. It means you'll call a cab for them, you know, call somebody to come and get them, Okay, but uh, you are not a taxi service. So, and remember, as I said before, um, if they give you your keys, that's great, take them, okay? But you cannot serve them, because I'm a mean, nasty drunk. And just because I gave you my keys, I get my ride home, I walk in the door. My wife, who's Sicilian, hates it when I drink, okay? She has no problem getting in my face. So if I backhand her and knock her teeth out, okay, I've now caused bodily injury to a third person with my hand. I didn't do it with the car, I did it with my hand. And it's bodily injury to a third person. She can still sue. That would never happen. I told you, she's Sicilian, she packs a knife, and I'm definitely afraid of her. True statement. So, safe selling guidelines. When in doubt, don't serve. Nobody can force you to serve, okay? You have the ultimate control. And if there's somebody that tries to go over your head, get your little book out, make them write it in their little book, and that they approved it, okay? Now they're swinging. Um, know where your alcohol is going at all times. Buy time, limit the number of drinks. If your hours of your bar are closing at 11 or closing at 12, there's no last call. You just close, okay? Because what happens at last call? Everybody stocks up, okay? <laughs> oh, I gotta get two for the row. Well, you know, that's never a good thing. You know, post the time. If the bar closes at midnight, post it, and that's it. And when midnight rolls around, you close it up, okay? Um, personal touch, always be pleasant, always make eye contact, small talk every time somebody comes up to the bar. Your best defense is documentation. Uh, let's see, a couple of legal footnotes. Uh, New York State is common negligence uh, state. 
So that means there are minimum standards for the actions of a uh, reasonable person to take to prevent um, problems. It is also draft shop liability, which means bartenders are responsible for sales to minors or visibly intoxicated people. Okay? And they use visibly intoxicated as the definition because not everybody would have a breathalyzer behind a bar. If somebody appears to be intoxicated, you cannot legally serve them. Okay? So, 18 to sell, 21 to consume, and the DWI is 0.08. All right, we're going to go into the examples. Um, on page 16 in your book, you go to that. There are three, uh, three levels of intoxication. Level one is no problem. The person's drinking responsibly, uh, does not appear to be intoxicated, and um, so they are no problem. Level two is a potential problem. Um, the more alcohol they consume, the worse they could get, or it's a possible underage person. All right, and a level three is somebody that's definitely intoxicated. So the first three are examples, I'll run through them, then I'll stop after each one. And I want you to tell me if it's a level one, two, or a three. Completely inappropriate speech behavior. Did you see if you're intoxicated? No. Okay, anybody read her a one? I talk about one and all the time. You got a couple of ones? Why was she a one? She talked clearly and stumbled on words and stuff. Okay. Who rated her a two? Why? 
Okay, that's possible. You didn't know where the second drink was going. She was borderline. All right, they rated her a one because she was ordering food, drinks, uh, eyes were clear, speech was perfect. Um, I would rate her a two because there's just too much information coming out of her mouth, uh, but that could be just her, okay? But uh, definitely not intoxicated. person and have a conversation with the adult that gave it to them, okay? Hey, thank you, Emma, here's 20. You keep the change, you have yourself a wonderful day. Excuse me, excuse me, I'm going to talk to you. What do you mean that you are, lady? All these people standing in line and you're just going to jump in front? None of your business, you have your beer. Oh, I don't think so there, lady. Again. All right, one, two, or three? Three. 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 One, he's from Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, we're great, the guy. <laughs> so, two, one, he was friendly until she came. Two. Two. He's a friend of the guy. All right, who rated him a two and why? Nobody gets a one. <laughs> aggressive behavior. Okay, he's aggressive, all right? So he's somebody that needs to be watched. And the more he consumes, the more that personality is going to be enhanced, okay? They generally don't improve. So, do you have a question on that Never one? Mind. It's also a good okay, uh, definitely was not a one, definitely was not a three. <clears throat> not being filled up yet when they filled them up she spilled everything all over the place so uh, that attitude once again will uh, be enhanced with the more that she consumes now when you have somebody like that or the first gentleman that blew up um, you need to have a conversation with them calm them down or explain to them that they would have to leave okay because your job is to create a friendly atmosphere those people aren't going to help ha make it happen. All right. I'm going to 
seems to be a pretty obvious three. All right, the reason, let's see. Uh, Good reaction and cordial. Number eight, if you didn't catch it, right at the very end, the guy handed off a beer to a girl standing on the side. That's why they rated it as two, okay? So possibly underage. Uh, two and number nine was two because when they first panned through the room, there were three kids sitting up against the table, one maybe 12 years old, okay? So definitely also possible underage uh, drinking going on there. <coughs> and the last one just committed all kinds of beer since double stack cups, beer all over the place, waste. So, all right, you want to take five minutes or, well, I was going to say take it to, my watch says you got four minutes to eight. So, you want to take four minutes to stand up, stretch your legs? Okay, now that you know what an intoxicated person looks like, how do you deal with them? 
very short and sweet. There's only like uh, six, seven specific rules. First, you want to match your response, give an appropriate response. So match your level of your response to the customer's behavior. You want to avoid escalating situations, but you want to be firm. Always talk in a level tone. All right, no threatening gestures or anything along those lines. Um, make clear statements. Make sure the customer understands what you're trying to say, okay? Offer alternatives. Use I in your statement. It shows that you care, okay? Uh, whether you do or don't, it's important that they think you do, all right? Um, let's see. Be non-judgmental. No put downs. Never tell someone they're drunk because the you get an argument on it. Okay? First words out of their mouth, no, I'm not. Okay? So never put them down, never use the term drunk or, or anything along those lines. Okay? Uh, no threatening behavior. Don't point your finger, don't glare at them, okay? Don't go nose to nose with them, don't raise your voice. It's all threatening behavior. And it'll get an argument back out of them. Always smile. It's disarming. It makes you think what's really going through your head. Okay? Uh, judgmental statements are perceived as put down to promote defensive behavior. So you want to give reasons. Uh, make the guest understand you're following laws and rules and not singling them out. It's very important that they understand that it's the law. Uh, provide good service and indirect strategies when appropriate. Direct strategies are always talk, talk to guests offer alternatives, suggest non-alcoholic drinks, and uh, offer to call for a ride for them. Indirect strategies. Enlisting the help of a friend. Uh, get second opinions on IDs. Somebody comes up with an ID, you don't like it. If you got two bartenders, ask the other bartender. If you shut somebody off, make sure every bartender that's working that evening knows that you shut somebody off, because if he shuts me off, I don't like you anymore. I'm going down there. He's much nicer. So, you know, make sure everybody knows. Um, limit the number of drinks at one time, especially towards the end of the evening. You definitely don't want to, you know, <coughs> give somebody two drinks uh, because you're going to be closing in five minutes. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, know where your alcohol is going. Can't say any more about that. So, what did I say? Six? There. That was six. All right. So now we're going to go. Um, that is part two. So we're going to go to um, judging the bartenders. All right. So you got a 50 50 shot at getting them right this time. Uh, level one is an ineffective response of the bartender. <coughs> They're not doing the proper job, whether it be they serve somebody, don't prove them, whatever. Level two is an effective response. This is where I want you to pay attention to how you would act in a similar situation uh, if you were the bartender. Okay? You may think what the bartender's doing is a little hokey, but put yourself in that position and think of how you would handle it. First couple of our examples.
Alright, who would have caved? Hey, not too great, Miss. Can I see a slide? Yeah, what do you want me to do about it? 
I mean, I just don't want you guys getting kicked out of the game. I can't serve them anymore, baby. Okay. Don't worry. I'll I'll take care of it. Gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Okay. Hey, hey, Gary, 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 just saying. One or two? Two. 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 What do you do? Okay, enlist the help of the friend. Talk to them. It's a lot a lot of times it's easier. Talk to the sober guy who knows how to deal with his friend. So, you know, you if at all, you know, if you can, try and go that route. They prevent the problems.
Uh, I graduated, I, like, 2008. <laughs> 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 All right, one or two? Okay, two. Uh, she's asking questions, uh, just <coughs> reading his face, okay? Hit him with a trick question, probably never graduated. If you had a 150-pound man and a 150-pound woman drinking the same amount of drinks over the same amount of time, the female will reach a higher BAC faster than the male. Okay. 
Tolerance only masks the level of intoxication. It does not mean they're any less intoxicated. It just means they can hide the signs of it. Okay? Drugs, whether legal or illegal, enhance the effect of the medication. All right, a legal ID is, number one, it must be valid and current. Uh, the five forms are a non-driver's license issued by the state, a driver's license, a uh, passport, military ID, and green card. A uh, secondary ID can be anything with their name and address on it, photo ID, something that looks just like them. Okay. Um, Keep in mind with the driver's licenses, they're eight years old. But if somebody, I think they renew them now for eight years, yeah. you don't have to have the photo updated every time. Until the last time I had mine done, I had dark hair. So, um, <laughs> long time. <laughs> so, uh, absorption rate factors are based on the size of the person's weight, not their height. Gender, female versus male. Food, did they eat during the course of the evening? Any food will slow down the absorption of the alcohol. Doesn't mean they'll be able to consume tons, just means it'll take a little longer for it to be absorbed. Strength of the drink, uh, the rate of consumption, mood of the person, and drugs. Will there, you know, if any are taken. Generally, people don't come up and advertise that they're taking medication, you know, I gotta wash down these codeine pills, you know, it just doesn't happen. So, uh, if you have to cut somebody off, say no and move on, offer an alternative, okay? Give clear reasons for why you're doing it. They give you a problem, call for backup, which could be another bartender, the manager, the host of the party, and last resort, police. The law says you have to make a reasonable effort. You do so by checking IDs. Now, when you're checking the best form of making sure underage people are not consuming alcohol is to check an ID. Backup systems are asking questions and what have you, but uh, which you should be doing, but you must check an ID. Okay? Offer alternatives, non-alcoholic drinks, documentation. Can't say enough. That's your best proof and your best defense. Okay? Um, when in doubt, don't serve. Know where your alcohol is going at all times. Uh, buy time. Limit the number of drinks, especially towards the end of the evening. Your personal touch is important. You always want to be pleasant. You always want to make eye contact. And you always want to talk to the people every time they come up to the bar. Okay? 18 to sell, 21 to consume. Okay. Intervention guidelines. Match. Uh, the appropriate response is matching the level of your response to the customer's behavior. You want to avoid escalating, but be firm, speak in a level tone. Make clear statements, make sure they understand what you're trying to say. Offering alternatives. Uh, use I in your statements, it shows that you care. Okay? Be non-judgmental, non-threatening. Never put a customer down, no threatening gestures, always smile. Uh, give reasons for your actions, uh, provide good service and indirect strategies when appropriate. Direct strategies are always talking to the guest, offering alternatives, suggesting non-alcoholic drinks and calling for a ride. Indirect strategies are enlisting the help of friends, second opinion on IDs, limit the number of drinks at any time, um, always keep your staff informed. Uh, and know where your alcohol is going at all times. Are there any questions? <coughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, I'm going to hand out the test. Um, first of all, on the back of your book, there are two pages. Pull them out. If you're not going to take the test, don't worry about pulling them out. Okay. Um, one is a class critique. A lot of the questions that are asked on there are meant for regular bars. So they won't really pertain to you. Uh, so just answer once it pertains to you and don't worry about the rest. On the sign-in sheet, it's your home address because when the cards come, I will mail the cards directly to your home. Um, 
social security number, just the last four digits. Okay. Uh, date of birth, let's see here. Uh, employer is the host company. I'm assuming it's not the district, right? The host company? Or whatever district. Okay. Put down the district. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, phone number, just a one phone number will work where if I have an issue, I can get a hold of you. Okay. I don't need a work number. If you want to put your cell, that's great. Uh, test ID in the bottom corner will be, I believe, 300. It is, it's 300. Uh, training method is in class. And my trainer ID number, I'll flip this page over. Oh yeah, after zip code, it's country, not county. So that's USA. Okay, there's an R there. Yeah, they're right. And, oh, you can't read my number. Uh, t my number that goes in the bottom right corner is 13829. All right. Now, I'm going to hand out the test. I make this statement on every <coughs> class. Do not write on the test. Only put your answers on your answer sheet. If you get a test and somebody wrote the answers on the test, they weren't listening to me when I said do not write on the test, which means they probably weren't listening 